All right, y'all. Fantastic. All right. Coming to you live right now in living color. Clint Russell from Liberty Lockdown Podcast at Liberty Lock Pod on Twitter. I'll put his YouTube channel in the uh, in the show description as well. Liberty Lockdown focuses on liberty for a podcast for those that demand freedom. We're going to talk about war. Um, you know, I don't uh, agree with uh, libertarians on everything, but they do get war completely correct, um, as someone in the chat said earlier. But let's get Clint on in the building. Let's see if he's here. Yo. What's up? What's up, man? Hey, how's it what's going? Up? Welcome what's back. What's up, Iggy? Oh, yo, yo, yo. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah, you doing all right? It's, it's uh, You're in Florida now, right? Yeah. You've been there uh, for a couple Miami. of years. Yeah, Miami. Yeah, it's bright there. Yeah, you got yes. the shining, the shining face of an angel. That's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm trying to put a, on all my lights uh, in front of me. I'm, I'm very backlit, as you can tell. Yeah, so. yeah, that's cool. Miami, huh? Man, so these warhawks, man, insane, yeah, right? Not, not fun. Yeah, it's not cool. I mean, I've seen you been posting about it and stuff, and uh, I don't know. They they barbecued forty babies inside of an incubator. Um, yeah. It's just war atrocities once going on. Once again. Yeah. Once again. I yeah. can't believe we're fa- we're falling for uh, you know, the the baby propaganda. This is this is what they do almost all the time. This is like this is like CIA 101. Like uh, people people don't aren't like woke to this shit yet. Yeah. It just blows my mind. Um and, and it's like but then all right, can can I explain for your oh, audience? Yes. You, maybe Absolutely. you've already done this. No, no, okay, no. no. So, Do your thing, brother. Okay, so um, like, it's a it's a it's a really genius format to create a lie like this. Um, and I, I, I it sounds like I'm like praising them. I'm definitely not. They're like unbelievably evil. But um, if you want to get, you know, the general population, anybody who's like got a heart at all. If you want to get them on board with truly heartless reprisal, like going and flattening Gaza tonight, by the way, that's going to be mm-hmm. happening. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is come up with a lie about children and and like anybody with a heart is going to be like, do whatever you have to do to go after those people. Now, on the flip side of that, because the claim is so gruesome to de- to demand proof of it even is enough to get people to call you you know a heartless psychopath and because like i don't want to see it i just don't believe you guys i just think you're liars (laughs) Um, so and then and then because the claim was so egregious the lie has already seeded the ground and and gotten people on board with you know reprisal murder mass murder of over a million children that are innocent that live there um but uh, but now all they have to do is demonstrate that like one kid was yeah. brutalized in such a fashion. Uh, now the headline of the forty babies decapitated. That well that that is that's just like part of history, and no one even cares. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's, yeah. It already it's, it, you see it already has its own Wikipedia page. I did the forty did. forty babies or yeah. I mean, like you said, I mean all they have to do. I mean one thing that I. <clears throat> I don't know if we ever get to know the answer to this is, you know, you said it like, how are people not awake on this? How, you know, there's a quote that I like to say, of course, from the movie Men in Black, where, you know, he says the the person is smart, but people are, you know, are irrational, stupid idiots and, and, you, and everyone knows it. But they right. just have this mass media thing on lock. And I don't know. And people will say that if you ask your average person, do you trust the media? Everyone's going to say no, but then they but, still appeal to the media oh, and they're, oh, but they're, they do. Yeah. They're, they're stuck in this delusion loop and I don't know how it can ever really, um, you know, you're big on the, the, on the COVID stuff as I am. And that didn't really wake up the masses. It woke up a lot of people, but the masses, I don't know if they can be woken oh, no, up. No, no, or, no. Let me quick, quick, uh, addendum to that. <laughs> it woke people up yeah. like in hindsight to what had mm. happened to them. But it did not wake them up and, and prepare them for the next psychological True. operation. True. And that that's what makes me so disappointed. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, you know, for me, it has just been the series of waking ups, if you mm. will. Yeah. Like with post 9-11 um, and war on terror, like, and then you have 
the global financial reset because I was a mortgage broker. I was yeah. able to like really understand how how terribly we were being lied to about why that terrible recession would come to pass and why everyone was losing their homes. Mm-hmm. So like m- most people weren't red pulled by that. But like if you understand Austrian economics and if you worked in that industry, you're yeah. like, oh, they're lying to us again. Damn it. Um, and then you have COVID. And like that's a major waking up. And I was, once again, because of my experience with those other two waking ups, I was already prepared for that one. And I I didn't get tricked at all, I, so much so that I started my show. Mm-hmm. So so it's like now I have all of these other waking ups. And so now this next one hits. And I'm like, yo, well, actually with Russia, Russia, Ukraine, I was all over that too. I was mm-hmm. like, we're being lied to egregiously. Here we yeah. go again. And uh, And most people didn't see through that. And now this one, it's like, it's like 85% of people in America just seem like they're just bloodthirsty again and, mm. and ready for intervention. It's just, it's just wild. Yeah. I mean, so this is, I don't know if I've uh, gotten your answer on this before, but do you, uh, you, do you consider yourself to be um, a certain wing of libertarianism? Like, are you more of a, do you consider yourself to be more of a right wing libertarian or just like, yeah. A, just, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing I was uh, bringing up a point about is that seem, you know, if you look at, um, I know you oppose government entirely, but if you if you look at, you know, the Senate and the House votes on a couple of these, you know, ant- condemning anti-Semitism bills and like supporting Israel, it's consensus right wing is there's not one dissenter against Israel. But on the left with the Democrats, I think there was 11 House members that voted against uh, this bill. So it's almost all of government. But. On the left, or I guess a better way to say it is, is because uh, I consider Republicans to also be uh, left wing. They're basically right, oh, yeah. right wing liberals. But you know, the Democrats, there, there are some yeah. dissenters there. So, what do you, you know? I, I guess I'm just p- kind of punting the, the the question to you. How do you? Why do you think that's the case on the left? And is there r- room to oppose? this uh this israel thing from uh, you know not a left wing perspective but from the democrat but i was saying because i want like a fascist dictator and i was like maybe it's a democrat <laughs> you know maybe maybe that's the deal in 20 20 years or something like that but how do you make sense of that whole you know the right wing has just been it's it's consensus what do you think about that yeah well i i think it's largely the evangelical wing um of the base and like they, they genuinely believe that like that's where you know the second coming <laughs> it's all it's like oh, biblical prophecy stuff you yeah know? like um i i don't necessarily well i definitely don't agree with it but i also i'm not you know so immersed in biblical right <laughs> teachings that i could i could really counter it as yeah. to like no you're you're reading it wrong like i yeah. I don't know that you're reading it wrong. I just think you're out of your mind. Like, mm. no, I don't. I don't. Th- I don't think that I need to give up uh, on the Constitution and send, you know, two percent of GDP to some foreign nation, no matter no matter what the nation is. Yeah. Uh, just just in case that God might be coming back. Like that's that's not how I I view the world. Um. So yeah, many of them do view it that way. There's also, and it's weird for me to say this because I constantly you know, mock everybody that calls everything racist, but let's just be honest. Like the GOP really doesn't like Muslims. Like after the, the propaganda campaign that they had with the war on terror, mm. they, they were like convinced that these people were subhuman animals that were co- they, that were out to get them. Yeah. And while there was a handful that certainly were and are, the vast majority of Muslims are not, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're definitely not. Yeah. Um, but they, they perceive you know the Israelis to be like this this one civilized people in the midst of just beasts. Like that's that's honestly their perception of it, um, and I just couldn't disagree more. I think it's really it's a really sick worldview. It's tiresome, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, they definitely. I mean, you think about it. Of course, nine uh, eleven was 20, 22 years ago. So these people aren't. You know, I hate to be more. They're not dead yet. You know, I don't want them to die. But you know, the people at the time, you know, they're they're between forty and like eighty now. The people that were right. of age at that time, I was thirteen. Um, and there's definitely some of that carryover. Do you ever go back? I don't know if the, if this worked on you at the time, or have you gone back and kind of uh, revised your thoughts? But um, I remember really getting got by those uh, ISIS like the beheading videos where they had like mm-hmm. a journalist out in the desert. Did that? I, I think most of those were fake. Um, I, I definitely think Israel played a role in, I think Israel played a role in the creation of every one of these so-called terrorist groups. Maybe not directly like they paid them to start, but 
Israeli and Jewish behavior. You know, that's that's one thing they just they 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 talk about things that happened, but never why they happened. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like so Jewish behavior at, at it's, bare, it's very it's very similar to the American government's mo. Ooh, like ooh. they just they they point at the consequences of their actions yeah. and then they go like. Everybody's out to get us. Yeah, you know? it's like it's like uh, no, you yeah. you really screwed over a lot of people here. Yeah. So you know, yeah. And so did you did you get got by those you know ISIS videos at the time, or you kind of just because you got yeah, red no, pill pretty early? So yeah, did you? Was yeah, that well, I still it was still enough to get me because um, you know I watched one of them, and you know back yeah. when you had to go to some random website that was really <laughs> gruesome to yeah. see this type of shit and. Uh, and I watched one and I, you know, whether it was real or not, I, I thought it was. Yeah. And that's just a really, a really egregious way to end somebody's life. Yeah. Um, so like, there's just, if, if you think it's real, which I did, then it's like, ugh, Jesus, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, how, how could you have become so radicalized that you think like doing this to a living, you know, human being is, is the way forward. Right. Um, so yeah, that. And, and let's just be honest, there are, there are, you know, people in the Muslim world that do per perceive that to be a totally reasonable way to respond to the, the grievances that they have. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're, we're about to witness a lot more of it tonight. Like, Dude. Uh, so they, so just know. to be clear and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this last night, they gave people of Gaza 24 hours to leave and they basically have no way to get out. And they don't have Correct. they're they're not being sent food, water, or electricity. And they're yep. saying Or medicine. Or yep. medicine. And the they're basically they've already been bombing the Gaza Strip, but now they're gonna do an invasion at some point tonight or or tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Um, I think it's like twelve hours from now, because they gave them twenty four hours notice. Um so first they gave them twelve hours notice to get out. And this was three days ago, I think. And then they started just bombing the hell out of them. So like 12 hours for 2 million people to clear out of a, a landmass that has two. Well, it's got it's technically it's got like eight entrance exits, but wow. like six or seven of them lead into Israel. They've all been shut down forever. And then on the flip side of it, there's one one exit into Egypt and Egypt has that closed down. And if you go into the sea, the Israeli, uh, you know, I don't know if it's if Navy or whatever they call it, but they'll they'll also <laughs> blow your ass up. So you're just you're just really in a prison. Like you just you can't go yeah. anywhere. Uh, so they're telling these people to flee from. I mean, just to be exp you know very careful with what I'm saying. Like it, they're they're telling them that they're going to invade northern Gaza. So they're telling them if you go to southern Gaza for you know, I don't know how long, forever, uh, then you'll, you'll miss this invasion. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll, you'll be, out, you'll be safe. You'll be out of the way. Uh, but the thing is like, these are, these are some of the poorest people in the world and most of them don't have anywhere else to go. And once their home is blown up tonight, they're not going to have anything to rebuild with. Mm -hmm. So like, what's the point? Why even go? And then on top of that, you also have the, you know, uh, Hamas, who probably is is forcing many of them to stay uh, and and not you know move so and then the the really egregious part is that there's two million people that live here o over half of them are children over half of them are under eighteen years old yep. and people are just like well should have had better parents oh <laughs> you know, my like, gosh you know people just don't care. Um, so it's I'm I'm very disturbed, man. Yeah, man, I, and it's you know there. It, it, you know, one thing is I don't really see too many things through the kind of modern lens, modern, you know, say, meaning last 300, 400 years of, you know, human rights and international law and things like, and war crimes. And thing. I kind of see things more from a pre-enlightenment perspective. Um, and but the, the the bottom line is governments that's of a, the world. I'm, that's a very funny sentence. What is that? I see thing. I see things through a pre-enlightenment. I do. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, think, I know. I know. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, but it's just yeah. it's just funny because enlightenment also is just like. Uh, you know. Yeah. Illumination. Yes. I, the, me, yes. the intellectual, the the, the primitive <laughs> barbarian. Um, yeah, like, I see. I see most things through the prism of the dark ages. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I do. I think they were based. I, I do. Um, <laughs> but but the bottom line is, you know, you know, 
kind of just to draw a parallel to the Constitution, it's it doesn't matter if I believe in the Constitution. The government has to believe in the Constitution because now they don't, but they they purportedly. But these governments, they all use things like human rights and war crimes and you know human you know these terms that that they they've accepted these terms by being in the UN mm -hmm. and all this stuff mm -hmm. and it's just crazy but you know the human shields both sides i just see this as a war and war is hell and it's messed up i'm not trying to trying to minimize it it's it's terrible but right you know the thing that um it's just that the zionists the jews are not allowed to be wrong it's like in this worldview they're just not allowed to be wrong Everyone knows the things about some a certain seg segment of the Muslims that they use brutal tactics sometimes, and but the the Jews just can't be wrong. They they it's a civil it's a military casualty to them. If it affects the Jews, then it's uh you know they're being murdered in the streets. And yeah, man, how do you see the foundation of Israel? I mean, like I know you don't you know like I said you're you're an ANCAP, so you don't really believe in government force at all. But do you think that? Yeah, I don't know if you know the history of how it was founded, but but do you view that as a legitimate state, even though you don't view states as legitimate? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no state is legitimate. So let's start start with that, and then I'll just go like, uh, you know, based off of my understanding of like international law. Yeah, yeah I think it's yeah, I think it's legitimate uh, under that you know pretense but like i don't agree with that pretense so right. it's like okay well what what does that mean yeah um but yeah i mean and let, let me also say like hamas is like vicious and and i told and like there are people in the muslim world that just want to wipe all jews off earth mm -hmm. so like uh i don't support that mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like i'm not i'm not one of those people that's like taking the side of the Palestinians right. because I love Hamas. Yes. Like that's not, that is not at all my worldview. Yeah. Um, but to your point about, you know, the, uh, the barbarity of, of, you know, warfare and like how war crimes is kind of a ridiculous thing to say. Like I, I tend to agree with you, but it doesn't change the fact that like, I, I do perceive the world or, or view the world in a post or uh, you know, post enlightenment mm -hmm. uh, mentality where like <laughs> I would, I would greatly, prefer us to uh diminish the loss of civilian and you know civilian life but specifically kids yeah. you know like can we can we just all agree we're not going to you know go to siege war with toddlers <laughs> like this yeah it just, it just blows my mind man yeah yeah and i and i think it's just it's it's sad. I don't think we need the enlightenment in order to see things that way. I think that's always been the case. And I'm not, you know, I think, it's, I think just, just it's just a no brainer. Like that's what I mean. Exactly. That yeah. You see this. Uh, there's an articles that have resurfaced from Ben Shapiro going back to 2002 where the, the, the I'm trying to find it. But the headline is literally, no, I don't really care about civilian casualties. <laughs> It, oh yeah yeah so he was, i'm glad he was good. telling the truth yeah exactly i'd appreciate that uh you ever notice that do you think his his face seems like it's changing over time like i literally think that his like nose and head becomes more like a gremlin i'm not even kidding we were watching one earlier and he like looks more inbred after uh <laughs> after after so many like years of being a warhawk and he like he becomes like the alien gremlin face but um Man, do you, yeah all, all yeah. i know is that i want to date his sister but yeah <laughs> No, no, everyone pray for Clint right now. <laughs> everyone, please. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mommy <laughs> milkers. Nom, 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 no, nom, nom, Clint. Nom. No. <laughs> Save Clint. Pray for him. I, I just had this like very serious, uh, you know, 20 minute rant about protecting human life. Yeah. And then I'm just like, Mommy milkers. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> do you know just a quick aside you know this is and this is kind of to a point i was just talking about but do you think there is something to physiognomy do you think that there's some there, there's something to like the way oh, yeah. someone looks can dictate like how they are just is dictated by yeah. how they are yeah? yeah yeah dude and i think i think people like also look a certain way based off of like their i mean it's like their genetic lineage that that brought them here so like yeah definitely yeah for sure <laughs> i love the response on twitter where someone will have like a broke or evil take and someone will just post a picture of them <laughs> no no argument needed they just right. this is what you look like um, yeah. yeah oh dude if you just if you, if you look at the average like college marxist 
like you, if you just look at their picture you're like yeah i get it <laughs> yeah 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 i, I would feel oppressed sense. too i'd feel envious and oppressed yeah, and want your, to steal your, <laughs> your dating pool pool is very limited mm. i understand and 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 your intellect is you know not so high so you really need the state to try and intervene to help you, <laughs> you know, level yeah. up here yeah um so yeah uh, so, definitely. So even though, you know, of course, you know, um, last time I had you on a couple of years ago, you know, we, we did, I mean, like I, I realized in the year in ANCAP, we, there was a couple like disagreements in our conversations about like, you know, you don't accept government. But ha having said that, what would take like what level of genocide? Here's one thing I always wonder for libertarians. What level of genocide would it take or what level of wickedness would it take for an outside state actor for you to be okay with an outside state actor coming in to, to, to do away with it. Like say they're, they're like tomorrow, Ben Shapiro comes in himself riding on a tank saying, I will kill every single Palestinian baby. You know, uh, would you want that? I'll, no, I'll, I'll yeah. meet, I'll meet Ben on the battlefield mm. personally. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That would be classic. I just, thought, I just, I just thought that was a funny Yo, visual. AI. No, no. Someone plug that into AI. Clint <laughs> Russell. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I'm famous enough for AI to yeah. like actually actually pick me up. And yeah. Go, Yo, Ben Shapiro versus Clint ben, Russell. Dude, epic. I would. Yeah. It's like choose your champion, right? Um, <laughs> People better choose me. Come on, man. Yeah. How uh, how tall uh, are you? Six one. Six one. Yeah. You would just stomp ass, dude. That, that would, <laughs> you would just stomp how, how, grabbler is, is ass. Ben short. I don't even know. I think he's like five, five nine, five eight, but he seems okay. very little. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. Look, he could be six five. I'm still, I'm yeah. still gonna house Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Let's be honest. Cool. Um, but I mean, to, to give you, to give you a, a more less joking answer, um, you know, I think that there's there's other nations that have a lot of like actual reason to try and intervene in the Middle East and other other uh, you know parts of the world. Um, I think that like the Polish have a lot of reason to intervene in Ukraine, mm. <laughs> you know, because mm. if they're if they're genuinely concerned about Putin taking over the re rest of Ukraine and then rolling into NATO country, like yeah, okay, like I I could see why you would want to be sending training and maybe even supportive troops or special forces or you know like that all makes sense to me. My my belief and it's a fervent one is that the U.S. has been the worst. Uh, you know, participant in intervention and created so much of this conflict that, like, basically, no, just the answer is no. no <laughs> I don't I do us, not yeah. want them intervening at yes, all. 100%. Um, now, if there was like, I mean, just to kind of draw it back to either the Russia Ukraine uh, example or the Israel Palestine example, if you know there was like a thousand expat Americans that were living in Tijuana. And they were being sieged by, you know, either the cartel or the the government. I could like, I could, I could understand. I don't know if I would necessarily support it, but I could understand sending in American special forces to try and get our people out. Um, yeah. So like, that's the that's the limit of my <laughs> willingness yeah. for intervention. And then if we're actually struck as we were not on nine eleven, I think you have full right to go after. Uh, the people responsible, unfortunately, I think about half of the people were responsible were in our own government. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's that's my perspective yeah. on it. So it's it would be both a, a proximity thing like in Poland or a, an yeah. interest, like if you have actual citizens there. And yeah, th that that makes sense. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Israel basically did 9-11. So um, would I back <laughs> that? Um, well, come on. Come on. The CIA did it, too. Give, give but I repeat credit. myself. <laughs> like that, that's what I mean. I I, I think the U.S. government that, has been in, infiltrated one, by man. by by Israel decades ago. So yeah, I mean it's complicated, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You want to put it put it mildly? It's complicated. Yeah. Yes. So just I mean just the Jews. Just just blame the Jews. You just like like. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm not well, gonna do hey, that. Hey, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna just blame the Jews. Mm. Uh, but yes, the Israel in particular has been uh, a big, a big participant <laughs> in kind of the, uh, you know, the co-opting of the American government and yeah. why no. we have no representation whatsoever. Yeah, it's pretty nuts, man. So I wanted to bring up a couple other things related to your career and stuff like that. I mean, this is a while back and. I'm sorry if this is uh, it's like a little too close home or whatever, but I one of my biggest laughs I've ever had on the internet 
was seeing Fred Durst, the real Fred Durst, oh, yeah. respond to you on 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 Twitter. So like you know you did Dude, that. I tweet. forgot. I, I honestly forgot Dude, about that. Yeah, that is that is cl- etched in Twitter lore for me. <laughs> See, like, like that was one of the funniest things ever. So he goes, "Dude, that's not fucking me." <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> So just to give people the background, you probably know people in the chat, but you know, you get did that stream with uh, was it Eliza Blue and Thaddeus Russell. And this is it was interesting because it resurfaced. And this yes. I remember watching this, um I watched that stream live on the treadmill year you know, a couple of years ago. Um right. and then it resurfaced with the whole Eliza Blue uh and thing and uh you're wearing your hat a certain way or and someone said called you Pred Durst, which right. completely took you out of context. It wasn't even the points you were making on the stream. No. I think it was just the, uh, the even having um, Thaddeus Russell on that kind of lumped you lumped you in with that. And Fred Durst responded. Um, did well, you? Look, keep, yeah, go ahead. Real, just to yeah. give a little bit yeah, yeah. more of the backstory. Sure. The reason I had Eliza on was to be critical of Thaddeus's takes on age of consent stuff. And yeah. like, um, <laughs> so like, it's just it's just so bizarre that like then a year and a half later yeah it turns out that like sh- her backstory is being questioned so now he like people weren't even concerned like the the reason he that like the reason that stream happened was cuz like it was to critique Thaddeus's yeah. position and and that was the controversy a year and a half you know back and then because she was under fire and people were just you know going through everything she's ever said on the internet they pull a little forty-five second clip where she's saying something um, that, to to her, is also not fair. I mean, like what she was answering was yeah. like, "How would we handle this if there was no yeah. state?" And and it's like, yeah, well, you know, familial, like we need to look after one another, <laughs> like you know, shit like that. Um, so it's just very, it's very unfortunate. But I thought it was hysterical because um, you know my my profile pic has been the same for five years. And it's me with a red, uh, uh, you know, baseball cap. And actually, the reason I'm dressed that way is like it was a theme birthday party, like mocking my own style. Okay. Um, you know, because I'm kind of a wigger, and every <laughs> so everybody, everybody at at my uh, my birthday party dressed like me. And uh, whenever I drink, I tend to like my hat starts forward, and then it kind of spirals to the back, like as okay. I become, you know, more drunk and more black. Um, and like it turn, it'll turn sideways and like yeah. then it'll turn all the way backwards and then like by the time I'm really drunk it's like sideways so I was pretty drunk in that picture and uh, <laughs> but in it I look I'm wearing a white t-shirt really with a drunk, red like you know baseball cap backwards which is like exactly what Fred Durst popularized when I was a kid and uh, uh, so yeah uh, and then uh, Poso was very pissed because I called him out for being a warmonger mm-hmm. and he he pulls this clip uh, out of context, he puts it out. Poso's oh. got two million fucking followers, dude. Oh, um, that's how and, it started. Okay. Yeah, bro. And then, uh, and, then, and then people start like quote tweeting it and saying like Fred, you know, Fed Durst or they Fed, Fed Durst or Pred Durst. Fred Durst or, yeah. And then and Poso calls me Lard Durst because he's saying I'm fat. <laughs> it was vicious, dude. Uh, oh. It was, but it was all like to me, it's all funny because you know I'm yeah. a Tower Gang guy, so like I yeah. think all this shit's hysterical, but yeah. like. Uh, I, I didn't think the out of context clip, like you know, saying that I was like <laughs> defending pedophiles, was cool. That that yeah. didn't I didn't like that. But uh, all of the Fred Durst jokes was hysterical. Yeah. Did you actually like reply to Fred Durst or like oh, try yeah. to engage? Did you guys have a back and forth at all, or or did you just no. say okay, all right? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Dude. I mean, given the context, he probably thinks I'm some you know child predator or something. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that is or given that's the lack of epic. context. Yeah, that's yeah. and you know the, the thing is is that you know just a talk about social media a little bit i mean twitter is the and i've tried to explain this to more normal people that are on facebook or whatever and i have a facebook account i'm on every social media but you know twitter is the smallest one of the huge ones and but twitter is just where the game is played i mean and, and there's and there's the reason is because there's no other platform where you could actually get a response from you could get a response from the supreme leader of iran and from fred right. durst and from the president and from me like whoever someone yeah. big small or whatever um so that's just i call twitter just the game people are like get off twitter go to gab like you're you're, you're feeding the beast by being there it's like to a certain oh, yeah, extent yeah. but it's also where the game is and it if is the, the game's game. being played i want to be in the yep. game right I totally do. Yeah. And yeah, I, and I'm going to be honest. I love the game. I love the game. I love, I love it. it. Too. I, I love I'm very, the game. I'm very, 
I'm very competitive. I'm also like, I'm, I'm, I, I can write pretty well. So like, um, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I'm a formidable opponent online in that mm. format. Like I, I'm a problem for you. If you want to, if you really want to go at me and plus I also know what I'm talking about. So like, good luck, dude, you want to, mm. you want to drag me with some nonsense? Like I'm going to ruin you. Um, so yeah, I love the game, man. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Have you know, another question I had is, have you ever, you know, so Clint does his, uh, on his podcast, he has intro and outro music that you actually rap on. Um, right. have you ever rapped that like that song live? Like, have do you, have you done a, ca- uh, a concert since you started your pod? <laughs> a concert, Dude, it, you know, it's funny because like I, when I started to get invited to speaking gigs, I expected that to happen eventually. Like just to have someone be like, we got your, you know, like we got your, your, your beat for your, you know, your, your song. Um, and to just like hand me a microphone and be like, yo, wrap it and then come up and give a speech. <laughs> you know, like, mm. <laughs> so I was very nervous about that. Cause I don't even know, I don't even know if I have all the lyrics memorized yeah. anymore. Um, so no, it's, it's very surprisingly, it has never happened, but I will say this. It's very, very fun. A lot of my fans will, upon like meeting me in person, will start to rap. The, yeah. the song to me so that's very fun mm, yeah I, I was gonna be like yeah i i was gonna try to find a way to tie in your lyrics like in like an easter egg question it's like what is the thing that requires a fight not tweeting from your phone like you know like because i know i know some of the lyrics too uh, <laughs> right, right. I was like what that's is the, the, the current events issue that requires the biggest fight not just tweeting from your phone um <laughs> but yeah <clears throat> anyway so you've been on timcast a couple times now how, how many times have you just been on was it twice three times no dude uh five or six Dang. or seven even i don't even know Whoa. A lot. okay because i saw the first two and i saw you went on there as well with uh i think you went on once with top lobster um but yes yeah. yeah, so you're like a regular regular ass guest now uh, pretty regular wow um, i'm back i just got booked again so i'll be out there in a month wow so. how uh I don't know if you're allowed to talk. Like, how does the booking work? I mean, is it still through? It's there's call. Is it L- L- Lisa, Lisa, Elizabeth, or is it Cassandra and McDonald? Like, how does the booking process work? Uh, both of them are actually in charge of booking, but okay. like for different purposes. I think one of them does IRL and the other does the Culture War, which is the Friday show. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's that's how it works, and yeah. you know that. And again, like. I think it's just because of the game, as you described it. It's yeah. like it's just my my presence on Twitter, and yeah. you know whether or not they they like like what you have to say. Probably mm-hmm. um, not Tim. Tim has uh, people don't even know this, but Tim really doesn't have any anything to do with the booking. Yeah, you know, it's just like <laughs> he's he, just like whoever she puts in there, that's who he's talking to that night, yeah. and he doesn't even look at the schedule for the most part. Like he doesn't even know who's going to be there because every time I get there. Um, you know, Tim and I, uh, play poker together a lot. So he'll be like, like the last time I was there, he's like, all right, we're going to extend your stay so we can go to the casino this weekend. Right. <laughs> wow. Poker <laughs> player, we just huh? played, then we just played poker all weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do Oh dude. Yeah. He plays poker. Really? Wow. Yeah, he is obsessed with it. And he's still at that little compound, right? But his, his compound, it's in West Virginia or is it in Pennsylvania? I know he, like, he kind of yeah. goes across state lines to, because I, I researched this during his, I don't know if he's still getting swatted, but, you know, he was getting swatted all the time for about a month there. But Yeah, it, I, don't, West, I don't actually know, like, it's right on the border yeah. of, I think, three states. So okay. I don't actually know what state I'm in because they sent a, a vehicle to pick wow. you up. They don't. They don't. They don't like black bag you or anything. I just don't pay <laughs> attention to like which state I'm in when yeah. uh, I'm at his place. But to say it's a little compound, you know, that's a compound, dude. Wow. That's a big ass house. That's one of the biggest houses I've been in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like West Virginia, in that in that arena. Right. Yeah. The the, the final level of the Tim Cass compound is just a CIA black site. It's where they <laughs> yeah. they play uh, Rage Against the Machine, throw a a black bag over your head, and like feed you slop. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I mean, they, he has a full on, you know, skate park in his basement. Dang, so this, is a, dude. this is a serious house. Insane. I mean, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say full on skate park. It's a full on half pipe. Like a half pipe. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like and then in the front, he's got, you know, like different like grindable devices and like a quarter pipe and wow. a bunch of shit. Dude. Sick. Homeboy's homeboy's for real, man. Yeah. He, he really he really does love skating and he loves poker yeah he loves politics that's yeah. and that's basically all he does <laughs> wow 
Well, I'm really, I'm really glad your career is going so well. I mean, you've, you've really blown, you've really made, you've blown up since you started your, sh your show three, three years ago. Um, one of the last things I want to um, get into uh, is, is finance. I mean, one thing, I mean, I, I'm like the, whatever, you know, like I'm like your, your inverse doppelganger you, you have a lot of expertise. I'm like your mirror image and I have a negative expertise. <laughs> I've had a little bit of a career, you know, uh, making money off of teaching music and I've, you know, right. I own my, my own, I own my own house. House. that's fantastic um but you're killing it dude yeah dude uh, i remember just back to tim cast real fast i remember you uh the first time you were on you made this like joke about tim you're like look at tim you're like he, tim's like i'm doing very very well you're like look at look at tim flexing over look, here look at you, kid. <laughs> look at you. Um, yeah well because yeah. he is dude homeboy's yeah, a baller like yeah. I, and i respect that because like yeah i mean and he's and he's like all about building like a real empire Ooh. um personal opinion he's got too many projects going and he needs to like bring in more people to help and i yeah. and i offer to do that we were actually in negotiations for me to do that wow um and i won't give all the details but like in may in a major way and uh it didn't end up working out negotiations wise and i think you know that's kind of like that's the nature of someone who's like kind of a visionary is that they they have a hard time you know turning over their babies to anybody else and because mm. of that oftentimes you don't get your babies fully grown and mm. you know and he's got he's got a lot of babies he's got mm. a ton of ideas mm. um so that's you know that's the only critique i have of him i think he's a he's a good guy though and i don't have any hard feelings for us not coming to terms on a deal it's no big deal i'm a business guy I like that that's totally yeah. fine um but yeah he's uh he's got a lot of a lot of a lot of pans on the fryer so to speak wow. yeah so so you're uh you know we've gotten into a little bit of the finance thing the last couple times you've been on the show but my main lens that I want to talk about this through is, you know, um, does the collapse actually have to happen? I mean, because yes. it, so, so, you know, if they just keep faking it, if they just keep faking it and calling it and lying about it and calling it something that it isn't, I, it, so you sit, you think that it has to happen. Why yes. does it have, have to happen soon? I mean, do you think it has to happen in the next 10 years? Uh, I mean, in terms of like, well, yes, it okay. will happen in the next 10 years, but okay. like whether or not it's the big one, you mm -hmm. know, like where you have the hyperinflationary death spiral, I can't say that definitively. I would yeah. like, if I were to give it odds, I'd say yes. Okay. Like within 10 to 15 years is like almost, almost a certainty. Um, but that's more just based off of my, my understanding and my estimating. Um, mm. So like, it's, it's still an estimate, you know, I can't say a hundred percent yes uh mm -hmm. but from my from my opinion it's like a 95 percent probability that within the next 15 years we will have a terrible terrible financial you know catastrophe yeah uh and the, and the reason is because of you know my understanding of austrian economics but also because of my career I, you know I, I all i did was manage money for private investors in the real estate market and uh you know i i have a very Kind of visceral understanding of interest rate policy and, and how that has a you know a ripple effect throughout the rest of the the economy and now because the us dollar is a reserve currency it has a ripple effect throughout the world and yeah there's just to me it's just there's no doubt yeah it's, i mean it's it's coming yeah i mean so yeah i mean i think it has to right because it, you know yeah money is just again i'm i'm basically an idiot on this stuff but, but you know money is basically a symbol for real shit and real if you stop manufacturing and we don't manufacture manufacture as much as we used to at all um right. eventually that thing just becomes a symbol for almost nothing and what what you know, walk me through what a do, you know if the dollar were to collapse the currencies can collapse but they don't necessarily have to be restructured every time they collapse but you know people have been talking about you know the world was you know the the one world nwo currency them coming in with like a digital dollar or whatever what would an actual collapse plus replacement look like like what how would they restructure it so it isn't even the dollar anymore what would that look like um maybe not from a day-to-day -day standpoint, but from a week-to-week -week or month-to-month. -month. Like one day the dollar becomes so ass that they, they kind of trot out a solution. in something else. Yeah, yeah. What, is it, what does that look like from the week-to-week, month-to-month perspective, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very hard to say, but based off of their own words and their own writing, you know, it looks highly probable that it'll, it'll be a central bank digital currency. Um, so, 
I mean, a lot of people kind of misunderstand that because they they think that like I mean, if you if you actually look at your day to day life, maybe not you, but the vast majority of people, it's going to be you never interact with cash anymore. It's all credit cards. It's all online banking. You know, like it's it's all it's basically electronic. You know, it's an electronic money system to a large extent. So much of this is like a natural evolution of the transfer mechanisms for value because that's that's what money is and because we're now entering more of an internet-based economy um, you know a virtual economy if you will well it, it makes sense that there will be these virtual currencies that start to fill the void the problem is that with a central bank digital currency it will have a you know a blockchain potentially but but most importantly it won't be a decentralized blockchain it'll be a, a monopolized one mm. where there is no probably there will be no public ledger at all that you're able to look at and it'll just be held either at the United States Treasury or at the IMF or wow. at you know who knows will who will actually have those records um, so it's it and because it's it's capable of being like a total panopticon technological um, you know utilization for the the federal government or the global government if we have one at that point uh, it's it's inescapable you know like you if you if you remember the canadian trucker convoy they seized not just their bank accounts and shut down their credit cards but they also went after uh you know cryptocurrency that they were trying to use like they were wow. being donated so it was Yikes. a you know that was like for me that was the first example and, and keeping in mind too that trudeau and uh i don't know if her name's freeland i think it's freeland um, they're both uh, uh, world economic world economic forum young young global leaders, and I think that like that's where I'm getting much of my understanding as to what is to come or what they want to be to come, mm. is that they say this openly, they talk about it, and so yeah, I'm sorry I, I gave you a lot there, but that's fine. The, uh, that's yeah, the the day to day would be that all of your exchanges would be done with you know some sort of app on your phone that has some sort of ledger of like your universal basic income that you've been receiving from the federal government that is based off of digital us dollars or whatever they call it global globo bucks global homo bucks um, homo bucks, and, yeah <laughs> and then and then you like you that's how you would do it but if you become if you are a political dissident like myself or you or anybody listening to my voice right now yep. uh, then they will probably just like shut off everything and you won't have any any way to even prove that you ever had your global homo bucks and and you'll just be asked out and Ooh. that's that will be the that will be the control tool to get everybody to shut up and get in line wow yeah i mean so it probably and it probably won't look like someone at a podium saying well the the dollar's fake and gay today we're transitioning probably use some sort of crisis or some sort of uh you they know always do yeah, as a pretext right so it wouldn't be yeah it, it, they always do yeah Yikes. so th that's that's why i'm this is why i've like i take such a kind of panicked <laughs> view of like why probably why i come across you know, kind of unhinged at times is like mm. I understand that like it's a race against time here. Like I am mm. trying to wake people up to what's happening while I still can. Yeah. And I'm like and I'm like if if I if I don't do this successfully, it's like there will be kind of a zero hour, you know, where it's just like, okay, like the new totalitarian world is here and if you if you've woken up and I've reached you, like I have you and like great. And if yeah. I haven't, I probably never will. And wow. it's just going to be this inflection point where it's like you're either red pilled and cool, or you're just you know global homo lunatic. Um, so that's <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm just trying yeah. to get as many people on our side as I can while I still can. I feel you. Yeah. Um, we have a question in the chat, or just a, a thing that someone that people are bringing up. Um, so they're talking about um, BRICS. You know the uh, what? I don't remember all the well, like nine other countries just got added into it, yeah. so it's not just. Bricks Brazil, anymore. Russia, India, China, South, South Africa, Africa, and then yeah. there's like four or five others. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, what do you think? Um, I mean, and I, I, this is a little bit. I like bricks because I am a dissident. So when I say uh, like I'm an American, but I'm not pro American government. I'm actually a little more pro Russia and Chinese government because my enemy is the U.S. regime. Not just the government, but uh, but but the regime, the media, all kinds of things. Um, sure. But say BRICS were not to go along with the the homo bucks, yeah, is that they're not. They're, yeah they're not. So how do you see that's that actually I guess t 
kind of answer my own question, that would be a good check against it. I don't know if we would move or we would just, like import our own ATMs for, you know, based <laughs> bucks. But do you yeah, view no. bricks as a good thing? Well, I view it. I view it as a good. It, it, you know, whether it's good or not is kind of irrelevant. It's a natural yeah. thing. It's yeah. it's it's competition, and like competition, because I'm a free market capitalist, is like yeah. that's a good thing. I would right. rather there be competition. Mm. But the reality is, is like I don't really want to live under the thumb of Putin and Xi any more than I do Biden. Yeah. And you know, it's not Biden, and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, yeah. Like most of these most of these leaders aren't really the people that rule over us. So. Yep. Um. But I, I do want to have other avenues to be able to you know, transact and participate in commerce without mm -hmm. being at their mercy and having it inflated away based off of their you know, dictates and policies. So mm -hmm. uh, you know that's that's why I'm I'm more of a Bitcoin advocate mm -hmm. or you know precious metals or hard assets. Like mm -hmm. I think that 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 is really the way forward for people that are true dissidents. Uh, and Bitcoin, as far as I can tell, is like the best the best option for like the real political dissidents, as long as you take it off of the exchanges and you, you know, you possess, you know, not your keys, not your coins, that, that whole thing. Ooh. Um, you, you have to really, you have to truly possess it. And, and if you actually memorize the, the seed phrase, you can, you know, have like it just in your mind and you can go anywhere in the world and be able to, to access your life savings potentially. Whoa. Um, so that's a, that's a tremendous power that I like, I think, is going to become increasingly evident as to why it's so important uh, as like political dissidents become persecuted more and more viciously. Mm, that's so, so I mean, I guess, so people, yeah, they memorize their, you say it's called an exchange. Is that what the name for it is? No, see, seed phrase is what they seed call it. Seed phrase. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I've seen it before. I've seen mine. Um, and it's something like, 26 characters but i mean i've seen other ones where it's a list of words i guess that's on an exchange though but you get it off of an exchange where where i still have trouble conceptualizing even though i own some crypto if you have it off of the exchange where does it exist on the blockchain on the blockchain uh, yeah the the blockchain is is managed by all of the computers that are uh, mining for bitcoin right. it's yeah. like uh, and it's basically just a con constant auditing of the entire um, ledger of of all transactions that have ever happened on Bitcoin uh, on the on that blockchain. It's a really it's a really ingenious design, uh, and I think that's why you know it's it's been so successful so far. Uh, the problem is like it's still kind of a novelty, and most people don't understand it, and it's very hard to it's expensive to transact but then like lightning's coming out to try and you know reduce the costs of you know transacting in it so like i'm not i'm not convinced that it will be you know a replacement for the us dollar far from you know far from that but i think that like it's an insurance policy for political dissidents like first and foremost like Ooh. for me that's that's the real uh the hedge, you know, yeah yeah that's the value wow all right, cool, man. Well, yeah, I just want to talk to you a couple of those about a couple of those things that I know almost nothing about. Um, before I get you to plug uh, your your show, I'm gonna show you something real fast. Get your uh, get your thoughts on it. Uh, we have sure. our we have our meme smiths over here. Um, so here is one of our meme guys just made this uh made Dude. this <laughs> made this image right here. So that's a for the people just what, listening. Why, that's why, why am I on the horse and and Ben gets the tank? Damn it. Yeah, because. Well, that's 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 the power dynamic between the Jews and people like you, man. I mean, I know you don't. Well, maybe I, you don't think that, but <laughs> well, I will. I will say this: uh, I do look pretty chadly on that yeah. horse. You know, just standing in front of a tank, like come and get it. That's right. I mean, what you what you do is you charge the tank. You do a, like a surfboard style springboard off of the horse with the scimitar and cleave <laughs> full full cleave full off. force yeah that's right and then you do like you know it's like bollywood movies you know like the bollywood movie oh, yeah. they'll, they'll like those are the best tri triple flip quadruple flip you you cut off ben shapiro's uh head in minecraft and you continue right. the flip and you land on the other side and just sprint away and that's it's yep. like credits dude right? have you have you watched rrr what is that no Oh, bro! If you if you know anything about Bollywood and you haven't watched <laughs> RRR on Netflix, you are you are missing out, homeboy. That is is one of the greatest movies ever made. 
RRR. So watch RRR in Hindi in English. So yeah. oh, I've seen Netflix. some clips from this. We've Bro. yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so dope, and it's like it's basically like a gay love affair <laughs> between oh. like between like the the aristocrat. Uh, I mean, they're not gay. I'm not. I'm, I'm, but I'm but it, that. it I, seems that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm using that very loosely, but it's yeah. like it's like the aristocrat Indian versus like the you know the jungle Indian, and and they like they work together to try and like free his people or whatever but they're like shirtless and sweating and like giving each other like strong embraces like where the arms hit like this you know like (laughs) it's just it's just like the gayest dopest thing ever (laughs) it's three hours yo okay oh bro bro it'll feel like five minutes it's the fucking greatest movie ever (laughs) a fearless warrior on a perilous mission comes face to face with a steely cop serving uh british forces in this epic saga set in pre-independent india uh three hours and five minutes let me just tell your audience uh Put your phone down, put, close your laptop, watch the first 15 minutes of that focused, and I assure you, you will not pick up your phone or open your laptop. You will watch the rest of that riveted because it is one of the dopest movies of all time. Wow. <laughs> Me and the Tower Gang guys like absolutely love that movie. It's it's, And they like they sing and they dance, but it's like not gay somehow. I don't understand <laughs> it, dude. It's just the, it's just the dopest movie ever. Well, wow. how's uh, how's Tower Gang going? I mean, you guys get guests on and stuff. Well, you, most of you guys are you basically it's like you're just like shit posting all the time. I've, I've watched four or five episodes, but you're just like it's like a a shit post uh, show with sometimes right, guests, writing right? room, yeah, yeah, like a writing room. Yeah, I mean, we used to have a lot of big guests on, but like mm. because like I think we're a lot funnier when it's just us. So. Yeah. I, I am constantly like telling them not to invite guests mm. <laughs> because I just like having the five of us. Um, uh, and, and honestly, like that's a lot of people to have a microphone on anyways. So, um, but yeah, the, the show's going well. Uh, you know, it hasn't like exploded in popularity, but we have a very, a very passionate fan base of like a couple thousand people that, that watch or listen to it every week. And, um, you know, the live chat is always hysterical. We have some of the funniest fans on the planet. Uh, as I'm sure you, you're kind of in a similar camp here. Uh, so, yeah, I love it. I love the community. Um, and, you know, we'll see. We'll see if that takes me anywhere. But uh, it hasn't it hasn't matched my trajectory with with Liberty Lockdown. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, we didn't talk about it at all. But are you familiar with Luke Rutkowski? Mm-hmm. I, I started a show with him. That's right. Uh, I saw that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So he he and I are doing a two hour like live in studio show. Um we're, we're probably, I mean, uh, the plan is to do it Sunday through Thursday nights, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Whoa. And yeah. So, so that's a huge commitment. He lives down there? Yeah. yeah oh. Like almost neighbors. Um, Whoa. So, yeah, he's he and I have done, I think, five episodes so far, and we're, like, approaching a million views between the five. So, like, it's, it's you, crushing, man. dude. Wow. Yeah, it's crushing. Awesome. What's the name of that show? It's... We don't have a name. That's a oh, problem. Uh, okay. It's it's on his We Are Change channel. All one yeah. word. We Are Change. You can find yeah. it on YouTube and Rumble. Um, but right now we're in talks with Rumble to try and try and go exclusive with them. So mm-hmm. I, I would encourage people to, if you're going to subscribe, probably Rumble will be the place where we do it because we have on, you know, guests that are kind of fringe and we want to be able to talk as honestly as possible. And you just can't really do that on YouTube. Yeah. As you know. Yeah, Rumble is what's up, man. I mean, I'm very happy with what they're doing. Um, I don't think there's – I haven't seen any – the only thing I saw with censorship with them is uh, Nick Fuentes um, said he, like, declared a holy war um, in mm. a speech. He was banned for two weeks, but, you know, they came to an understanding or whatever, so that was just a two-week thing. But have you seen any censorship other than that on Rumble? Never. Never. We're at home, yeah. man. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I would still rather it be a platform where I could also declare holy war. Like, mm-hmm. That would be cool, but yeah. um, particularly because I would be doing it in jest. <laughs> so I would yeah. like to be able to say whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Fuentes does, does push, push the limit sometimes. Yeah, sweet, man. Well, yeah, so this is going to be a podcast, so tell people where they can find you online, um, Twitter, whatever else you want to plug, and thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Liberty Lockdown, just search that, and that's like kind of my flagship. Um, Tower Gang is my, you know, shit ship uh but it's very it's very <laughs> funny if you like extremely inappropriate uh conversations that are very not politically correct you'll enjoy that 
and then uh, We Are Change. Uh, it's actually not a podcast yet. I'm working on uh, getting the RSS out, but we need <laughs> we need a show name for me to do Ooh. that. Um, but yeah, We Are Change, all one word, and you can find that on Rumble. Uh, we had on Larry Sinclair, Obama's lover. Uh, Whoa! On, uh, yeah, that was the first episode. It was actually right after Tucker Carlson's uh, episode with him aired. We had him in studio that very night. So like the minute the minute that Tucker Carlson interview ended, we started with Larry Sinclair in studio. Crazy. Um, so that's why we did quarter million views on that one. And then uh, we've also had on uh, Carl Benjamin, aka Sargon of Akkad. Um, we've had on some hypnotist i'm blanking on his name right now we had on the the lead architect for uh you know 9 11 architects and engineers for 9 11 truth um we had him on and then god what's the most recent guy i'm blanking oh why can't i remember uh oh we had on my my boy uh prime time alex stein oh. and then uh and right now we're booking uh vivek ramaswamy to be in studio and uh and matt gates and and uh, the one I'm most looking forward to will be Roseanne Barr. We're, we're booking her to Yo. come in and, and do two hours. That that for me will be extremely surreal because as a kid I watched her, you know, her show. Dang man, well wow. I'm glad you're doing good stuff out there, man. I I wish you all the best with your career and things like that. So uh, thanks for coming thanks, on. Bro. I'll I'll see you out there on the internet. All right. Peace. Have I'll see you, I'll see you in the game. All right. See you, man. Bye. Ba bam. Yeah, Clint's a good one, man. I won't let it go so so long before we get him back on the next time. I think I had him on just under two years ago. That ain't right. Clint Russell, Liberty Lockdown. This has been an episode of Call Me Ignorant. A couple podcasts a week. That's my goal, is to get uh, two guests on per week or at least uh, front load it so I can get a backlog going and get two people on. I do have to fix some things about the podcast. I'm in the uh, process of of finding another podcasting hosting platform. So I'll be working on that because my Pete Quinones one did get taken down. I never even got an email about that, but it got taken down from what I see on Google Pod and what's it, and Apple Pod. Don't know what happened, but I'm going to be jumping ship from Podbean soon. So Clint Russell at Liberty Lock Pod, Liberty Lockdown on YouTube and that show that doesn't have a name yet with uh, Luke uh, Rudkowski. That would be a good guest. Um, I feel like it's, it's interesting. I'm having so many libertarians on, but they're the ones that are answering my DMS. I don't know. Maybe it's cause it's voluntary. I don't know. Love you guys. Call me great. Thank you so much for watching the video. Really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you go over to the channel, hit subscribe. That'd be awesome. Ignoramus videos over there on YouTube. Also, please go over to my link tree. That is linktr.ee forward slash Ignoramus Media and give me a follow on all the different platforms listed over there. We live stream on Ignoramus Streams YouTube as well as Rumble and Odyssey every weekday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. The first hour is a Bible study and then at 10 a.m., we start uh, the daily ignoramus which is you know politics news current events things like that also just having a general good time so yeah go over to the link tree listed below in the show description follow all the channels please also there's links there to to donate and to uh, do a monthly subscription over at sub subscribe star so yeah 9 a.m every single weekday check out the content and i'll see you guys next time